Hi, my name's Steve Genelik, and I'm a recording and mixing engineer based in Los Angeles, California. Today, I'm sitting in the beautiful PMC Atmos Equipped Room at Lemon Tree Studios, and I'm here to introduce Spherix, two new Waves plugins that were built from the ground up for super fast, immersive workflows. So I've been living in this Atmos world for the last few years, and now more and more people are coming into the world with me, and that's really exciting. I believe immersive audio is the future, whether we're talking about music, movies, video games. These formats are here to stay. Um, and up until now, we haven't had a lot of plugins that were built specifically for mixing and immersive. We were taking plugins and linking them together and, and trying to you know, make them work efficiently. It just wasn't quick. You know, it wasn't really intuitive. With these new plugins, you know, everything's right in front of you. Um, we've got this great metering across all our channels set right in front of us. I can see my inputs. I can see the outputs. I can select which channel I'm working on by clicking on the meter or by clicking on the little speaker icons here in the bottom corner, which is kind of fun. I've got my quick access knobs, so I can very quickly change parameters across all my channels. Spherix has given us control links. With control linking, I can group the parameters of certain areas of my mix, but the compressor is still working in multi-mono mode. Because I can tweak a parameter on one area very quickly and then move on to the next thing. My favorite part, I love the grouping here. I can group zones together. I can group zones of the room together. I've got an all option. This would be for, you know, a bus compressor. The other three options are fairly similar. The only thing that's different is how it treats the front wall. Either the all, the left and right, left, right with the center added, and left, right with the center and the sub added. Effectively, I now have three separate compressors. It's just a really great workflow, and it keeps me in my headspace of mixing music. Waves even invented this new parameter called weight. And what that does is it allows you to shift the dynamic energy between your zones. But we'll talk a lot more about that later. So today we're going to be working with a track by an artist named Richard Shelton. Uh, the track is called An Englishman in Love in LA. Kind of a big bandy swingy thing. Let me, let me play a little bit of it. I'm an Englishman in love in LA. So we're gonna start this mix like I start all my mixes with the drum and the bass. Um, I've got all my drums being fed through a drum bus, a 712 drum bus, and I've got the Spherix compressor uh, across that drum bus. And by using my quick access knob, I can change all the channels and then quickly go through and change the parameter on each channel. In this case, I'm changing my ratio. And now when I want to change the threshold, click the threshold, changes all my knobs to threshold, and I can quickly dial in some compression here. A little bit on the sides. A little bit in the tops. I think I actually want to speed up the release time a little bit. Changes all my knobs to release. And go a little bit quicker. So now for the fun part. So there is a faster way to do this, and I think a better, more efficient way to do this, and that's by using these channel groups. Uh, I've got four options of channel grouping. I've got an all option, which is what it says it is. Everything's linked together. This would be for, you know, a bus compressor. The other three options are fairly similar. The only thing that's different is how it treats the front wall. So as you can see in these other three options, my sides and my rear channels are always linked. My top speakers are always linked. The difference is the front wall. In option number one, I've got my left and right linked, but the center and LFE channel are separate. In the second option, the left, center, and right are linked, and my LFE is still separate. And in the third option, the entire front wall, left, center, right, and the LFE channel are all linked together. Because we're working on a drum bus here, I'm gonna choose the third option, which is left, center, and right linked together. So now I can 
Work on my front channels here. Dial in a little compression. Quicken up that release time a bit. Same thing on my sides and the rears. And then the tops probably get a little bit less compression. Let's see with that cross stick, I don't barely want to hit it. But when the drums kick back in, I'll have my compression. Bypass, you can hear it without the compressor. And now with it, a big ending is coming here. Without it, it really does a great job of controlling the dynamics. So having these group tracks available to me makes life really easy because effectively I now have three separate compressors, Effect really four if you count the LFE channel, but I'm working with three. Um, being able to just, you know, grab a threshold and adjust the left, center, right, it just makes life so easy and so fast. So now let's talk a little bit about the weight knob. Now the weight knob only works when you're linked in groups. This is a very cool feature that allows me to control what each group is paying attention to and to add or subtract weight to it. As you move the knob to the right, the compressor reacts to all the other channels, just like a bus. As you move the knob to the left, the channels act more like a multi-mono compressor. So I've loosened up the weight in the front. So the center channel is not compressing as much when that snare hits. And on my rears, or sorry, on my height channels, I've actually added some weight so that as the snare hits in the front, my ceiling speakers are compressing a little bit more. Just holds everything together a little bit better. So what the weight knob is doing is it's giving me control over the full spectrum of how this compressor is working. So I can control exactly how I want the group to react. So now we're gonna look at the Spherix limiter. Um, I've got this limiter across my master bus. It's really great to now have an immersive limiter on the output bus because you know we're all striving to get to that minus 18 number and uh, this is just another tool to help us get there. So working with multiple output channels in immersive can be very tedious. So Spherix has these control links to make our lives a lot easier. The control linking works very similar to the channel linking. The difference is with the control linking, I'm just linking the parameters together. I'm not linking the channels together. I can group the parameters of certain areas of my mix, but the compressor is still working in multi-mono mode. So I'm gonna set my control groups up on my limiter so I can control the front wall, the left, center, right. I'm gonna control my sides and my rears as a group, and I'm gonna control the ceiling speakers as a group. So you'll see I'm still working in a multi-mono mode, but my parameters are grouped. So as I bring the threshold down on the front wall, dial in a little bit of compression there, a little bit of limiting there. Now I can go to my side and rear group, dial in a little limiting. There we go. Same thing for the ceilings. Get a little limiting. Bring the volume down a little bit here. So this really helps to speed up my workflow because I can tweak a parameter on one area very quickly and then move on to the next thing. So there you have it, the Spherix plugins. Having tools that were built for the format has been great. I love it. They're really intuitive. Um, there's no more, 
you know, kludging stuff together to make it work. It's just, it keeps me in the music, which is what I want in my workflow. <laughs> 